The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and this show right here, the day we're recording this, it is officially the seven-year anniversary show. Holy shit. God damn. <laughs> Yeah, seven years, and as you heard, my co-host this week is the cat. Hello, everyone. Yes, who obviously is not one of the originals. They, they everybody from like the old show before I started putting them on Blip or whatever, kind of scattered to the four winds, doing their own things, and that's fine. Everybody moves and grows and does their own thing, and the show is what it is now. <laughs> uh, seven years. I look back, I'm like, holy shit. Ah. Uh. I mean, I've been doing I've been doing this show almost as long as Doug Walker's been doing the Nostalgia Critic, because I think he started what 2007. I I have no idea. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty sure he was doing it when um, you know, when I started. But but oh well. So it's been a couple of weeks. We had the holidays, Christmas, and New Year's, and everything. And, and for me, it was three holidays. You got the two major ones. And then uh, yesterday, the day before we started recording this, it was uh, my first anniversary with Becky. Aww. It's like, yay! Whole, whole year, holy shit. <laughs> I, I can honestly say, I think this is the longest relationship I've been in in my whole life. <laughs> uh, which, you know what? I'm, I'm happy for it. <laughs> it is what it is. Awesome. Yes, it is. Ah. So how, how was your holidays, Kat? Oh, well, I work retail, so I've just kind of wanted to kill myself for the last two months. Oh, no. <laughs> but I didn't, so I survived. Yeah, and I'm very glad you didn't. Otherwise, I'd be scrambling around for other co-hosts. Because, again, like I've said a couple months ago, we're trying to go to the three-person format. And every it seems like every time we try on this show, something comes up. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we've tried to do the three-person format, and not a single episode have I done three people with. Yeah, I know. Like maybe once. Yeah, I, th I think I think one of I know there was one. I think we I know we had Kira Kennedy on one of my patrons. I don't remember if it was you who was on or Omega that was on, but but uh, we had him on, and you know he... I think I, I was on that one. Okay, so yeah, so technically you have just not with another co-host yet. <laughs> right. Uh, Holly was supposed to be with us this week, but she has had computer problems out the ass for this past month. Like Jeebus, but 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 hopefully hopefully this week she will have all of her computer problems go poof and bye bye and she'll be able to start doing things again. Oh, uh, and so so I look I look forward to that. Ah, uh, and of and of course all of the all of the bullshit that's happened over the time. We're not going to go like into too much detail over some of the major bullshit that's been going on, like. It's becoming a lot more common to hear stories about police brutality, which is telling me, oh shit. <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of people would be probably be thinking, oh shit, this is this is this is getting on the rise. What the fuck? It's like, no, it's all it, it's probably always been there. People are just reporting on it more because people are sick and tired of that bullshit. You know. Also, it's it's become quite profitable to talk about it because now you know you can get people to click on headlines and stuff. Yeah. Ah, uh, but hmm. oh, ooh, yeah. You you ever hear you ever have that feeling where you know, a burp wants to come up and never does? Yes. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. I just had one. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it happens on the show. It ha it happens all the time. Whatever. Ah. Uh, uh, so um, but anyway. I do want to start a new segment, or at least I hope I can keep it as a segment. And I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but it's basically where I go through like an inbox or whatever. I want to open up the uh, Thespian Talk Tumblr inbox to this. The, the two I've got this week are for my personal one. And just answer questions. You know, you write in for advice, write in for whatever. What are our, what are our thoughts on this? Uh, you know, what do you, what do you suggest I do if my sister wants to have an abortion via cesarean section? I don't know. You know, anything. Just send it into the Thespian Talk Tumblr. It should be uh, thespiantalk.tumblr.com. Uh, it'll it, it's it's on the it's on the links in the bottom. Just click on that. Go to the ask box. I think anonymous should be on. If it isn't, I'll have it on by the time this show goes live. Yeah, but uh, but I I, I kind of want to do that. A little bit more audience interaction, and it's fun. 
Uh, so I've got, I've actually got two. Again, like I said, they're from my personal. And the first one asks, both are anonymous. The first one asks, why are people being labeled as rape apologists simply for saying they believe in the principle of innocence until proven guilty? Starting out with the rough ones, aren't we? Ah. <laughs> <sighs> oh. And see, the thing is, and, and I, I can see where they're coming from, because rape is heinous. It, it, is, it is one of the most horrible things that could ever happen to somebody. And I can understand why somebody would be labeled as a rape apologist, because in the mind of the people calling somebody a rape apologist, you know, they, they and, and I admit, I've fallen under this, I'm pretty sure you've fallen under this at some points as well, Kat, that... You know, if you see somebody who is accused of being a rapist, then you're they're automatically guilty in your eyes. You know, I, I've fallen under it. I, th I think we all have fallen under it. But the, that, but that's the key word, accused. Now, now we only know what the media tells us, and that's the only thing. You know, it's, it's got to be proven. And rape is a tricky thing to prove because it goes so far beyond just the physical. It goes to the psychological. You know, the victims, they, they would be afraid to speak out, you know, you know, like you like you have these victims like with with Bill Cosby. You know, you have all of these all of these people coming forward and saying, yeah, he did this to us back in like the 80s or whatever, you know, being scared to come forward in that time. And that that causes people to call that into question. Is it good? Uh, I don't know, because it, it does it does make it seem like. You know, it does drive some people to think, okay, she's just lying for it to get money or whatever, or fame, or or what have you, you know. And and that's the kind of society we're in, <laughs> which is very unfortunate. Uh, as, as far as, you know, you know, I think the shorter answer to that question as to why people are being labeled as rape apologists is, well, like I said, you know, people, you know, they hear the word accused of rape, they automatically think, holy shit, they did it. They need to go and have their nuts burned and tossed into the center of the sun. You know, that sort of thing. Uh, do you have any thoughts, Kat? Um, I'd, I'd say people are being uh, labeled as rape apologists because it's easier to put a label on people than it is to have a discussion with people. That's actually a lot simpler than my explanation. <laughs> <laughs> um, because some people just want... Uh, want to write off another person's opinion, say that even, even if the person is a rapist, until it is proven in court, it, you know, it's, you can't confirm or deny. Even if you know it, like in the eyes of the law, proving it in court is what's important for the sake of justice. Um, but that's really hard to argue with someone perhaps who is more sympathetic to the victim or someone who has been a victim themselves. They, they want immediate justice and and if you're going to deny them that, they're going to get angry with you, and they're going to call you mean names. Yeah, which I admit I've I've been on that side of the argument. I, I think I've probably have been on both sides of the argument more more on the oh my god this person you know immediately jumping on the OMG you're accused of rapist so you must be a rapist bandwagon. I've probably done it on this show <laughs> several times, you know. But that that's something that the the takeaway from this in terms of you know this whole question and everything going forward let's let's st step back and, and and analyze basically that's what i take away from it all yeah let's listen to each other and learn and have an open mind and not rape people yes don't rape people yeah raping people is bad yeah that's like saying hitler was a dork yeah <laughs> very underplayed all right the other question that i have why do you think some anti-war liberals are so willing to give Obama's military policies a free pass, even though they've been just as deadly as Bush's? I admit I've not paid too much attention to his military policies. I know from what I, under from what I understand, or I, th I think he's been bringing troops home or sending troops to places that they need to go instead of places that big money wants them to go. From my understanding, I, I probably am talking out of my ass on this one, <laughs> I will admit. So, uh, Kat, do you have any ideas? Uh, as far as I know, Obama didn't fabricate a lie to go to justify going to war with a country that it had no business going to war with um, versus, say, Bush. Right. <laughs> um, and plus, you know, yeah, okay, 9-11 happened under Bush, then we wanted to go after bin Laden. Okay, 
I can get behind that. I don't care what side of the I don't care what side of the political spectrum anybody is on. I think we all could agree. Yeah, go after the leader of the people who decided to you know run planes into our buildings. Okay, sure. But then we didn't catch him. And he supposedly went to Iraq, and and we stayed there for how long? Even even after a time where Bin Laden must have left or whatever because of some. Like you said, the fabricated shit? Yeah. Obama seems like, oh, you know what? Okay, we're going after Bin Laden. Let's go after him, get him done, and then we're, we're just going to clean up and come home. The uh, the stuff that the media is willing to pay attention to in terms of uh, President Obama and waging war is more of the technological slippery slope, like drones and stuff like that, and ordering uh, uh, assassinations of whatever... Um, we're more concerned about uh, abuse of the technology than we are about loss of life. I feel, anyway. At least that's what the media seems to be concerned with. And and I think most of us are willing to rationalize, uh, or at least some of us are willing to rationalize assassinating one or two people and uh, using technology to do a lot of work that might be more invasive than we are willing to say then say we're going to send you know 10,000 troops to another country where everyone's going to get mowed down at least i think that there's some like mental rationalizing going on yeah because we're let we're putting less troops on the ground so we don't think of it as much about being a war um and we're more focused on ourselves in in the usage of drones and invasion of privacy and stuff like that. And so I think we're, as a society, we care more about ourselves than we do our soldiers. I, I mean, as per usual. Of course. Because, yeah, look at, look at the vet, look at the veterans programs. <laughs> <laughs> what programs? Uh -huh, yeah, exactly. Uh, but that, that, that is going to be it for uh, our thing. Is it, I guess to sum up the final question there, um, like I said, it, it you, you know, Oh, oh, the takeaway, everything Kat just said. <laughs> that, there's your takeaway right there, because uh, you got a better handle on it than I did. I just um, made everything up and pulled it out of my ass. There you go. <laughs> oh, So, yeah, that is going to be it for this time. I, I'm i still debating what I want to call that segment, but hopefully if you guys want if you guys want to send questions to the show, get our thoughts on something that you know we may not answer like on our personal stuff or what have you, because I prefer to do it this way anyway, because I just prefer to answer with my voice and and put it in the show and also get an opinion from a co-host or two as well. Because also you know, typing takes longer. Yeah, it does. So so we we have all of that, but for now we've got news and the first news story of the new year. God damn it, Florida. Oh, take a shot. Yes, take a shot. And also take another shot because because before I hit this particular one, you've heard that, you know, the Supreme Court, the federal court or what have you, has said, yeah, you know what? You guys need to start marrying gay people because not doing so is unconstitutional. You know, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. There are like at least, last time I counted, about 14 counties that are just shutting down all of their uh, marriage license not marriage licenses, but they're not performing marriages or whatever in the courts or what have you. At least I think that's what it is. But anyway, 14, 14 people are, 14 uh, counties are just saying, no, we're not going to, we're just, well, okay, if, if we have to marry gay people, then fuck it, we're not going to do it. We're and, not going to marry anybody. Yeah. And guess whose home county is one of them? Uh, let, let's go with a Republican. Any Republican. Well, or, or yours. Mine. Your county. <laughs> it's like it was. It was either a prominent Republican or yours. Yeah, it is mine. God damn it, Jackson County. Fuck you. Ugh. Nothing wrong with gay people getting married. It's not going to shatter your precious little sanctity of marriage. Uh, there uh. is no sanctity in marriage. Sorry, but there's not. And yeah, Britney Spears proved that one. <clears throat> you know, you have drive-through wedding chapels in Las Vegas. I think the sanctity is gone now. I think we threw out the sanctity of marriage with Henry VIII, so it hasn't been around for quite a while. There you go. All right. So if you want to blame anybody for the desecrate for the death of sanctity of marriage, go talk to Henry VIII. Oh wait, he's dead. Uh, so fuck off. 
All right. But in Crestview, which is close to me, uh, a 54-year-old 50 year man was arrested on Christmas Eve after allegedly taking crack cocaine into the intensive care unit at North Okaloosa Medical Center to share with a patient there. Because sharing is caring. And why not? It's Christmas. <laughs> it's... They just wanted a white Christmas, that's all. <laughs> yes, they did. Because <laughs> we don't get that very often in Florida. I think maybe once we've had a white Christmas. We've had snow, not always on Christmas. Fire broke out at 3.43 p.m. when the patient, who was on oxygen tried to smoke the cocaine from a homemade smoking device, according to a media release from Crestview Police Department. The only property damage was to the bed linen, hospital gown, and oxygen mask, the release said. The ICU R was not evacuated. Wait, 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 wait. R was... R, R was not... Uh, editors! You, you have editors. Hey, you know what? I, 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 I think of myself as a decent editor. I live not too far. I'm about maybe an hour, hour and a half tops from you guys. Hire me. I will edit your shit. Uh, potential was there for a lot of damage, said Crestview Police Lieutenant Donald Fountain. It could have been a lot worse. He noted that the other patients and staff could have been injured, but had the fire not been extinguished so quickly. Crestview Depi Fire Department responded to the fire. The patient was transported to a burn unit as a result of burns he received, according to the release. <laughs> Lee Vern Cook, who authorities said admitted to bringing the cocaine into the hospital, also admitted to bringing a loaded firearm with him, the release said. Are we open carry? I don't even remember if we're open carry. Uh, but still, bringing a loaded firearm into a hospital, why? Are you, are you afraid a nurse is going to try and inject you with something and you have to shoot her? My, my assumption would be that they just carry it with them everywhere, although I would think that most hospitals would have a no firearms policy period yeah i i think even hell probably even this dinky little hospital in our in my hometown probably has one <laughs> i'm just saying yeah he allegedly led officers to where he'd hidden it in a bathroom after the fire he received minor injuries to his hands but it was he was evaluated and taken to jail cook is charged with possession of a firearm in the commission of a in the commission of a felony Ooh. Arson, five counts of possession of a controlled substance, and one count of possession of drug paraphernalia. There is the possibility of additional charges, and the fire is being investigated by Crestview Police Department and the State Fire Marshal's Office. Okay. It's good you want to give your friend a Christmas present. That's that's fine. And, and for your buddy who has the Christmas present, okay, you know, fine, whatever. Oxygen and, and, and smoking. There's a reason why you don't mix the two. There is a reason. Seriously, you should not ever combine your leisurely drugs with your medical drugs. No, just that, that, that's not, that does not happen. You know, poor guy in the burn unit, he, he's, he's going to be disfigured for a while, if not the rest of his life. I mean, and thank goodness it only, you know, was localized to that bed in that area, you know, because it could have been a whole lot worse. Can you imagine if all of those people in the hospital died because one guy really wanted some cocaine? Oh, God. Yeah, the war. Oh, yeah. Oh, that would be another bullet on the gun of war on drugs right there. It'd be like, yeah, you see this? This guy wanted drugs so much, he killed a bunch of people to get it. Uh, it was an accident because he was a dumbass. You know? Yeah. But, yes. So, so, our next story, we go to South Carolina. If we must. We must. Uh... Conway, South Carolina. A South Carolina man accused of rape was brutally beaten by the victim's boyfriend, according to multiple reports. William Matson, 52, was charged with criminal sexual conduct after police were called to a home in Conway early Thursday morning. The man apparently found the suspect in a bedroom on top of his girlfriend. Police said the boyfriend then started striking the suspect with his fist and drove him from the house into the front lawn. Police said the boyfriend then started... Well, what the... That's the same goddamn sentence twice in a row. God damn it, news outlets! Do your fucking editing! You're Fuck. the one who picks these outlets to get your news from, dude. This your exasperation true. amuses me. This is true. Ugh. Although, although, honestly, I kind of left it intact just so I could bitch at them. <laughs> Police said the suspect's left eye was swollen shut and, lit, and his lips and face were bleeding. By the way, since 
since this is video on the video, boom, there you go. That that is how it how he looks. This is the man that got the shit beaten out of him for trying to rape somebody. And and if that squeaks you, then I apologize. <laughs> but this is what happens. This is what should happen if somebody is caught trying to rape somebody. This is what should happen. Ah, uh, I'll take that off now. Uh, deputies say the boyfriend was acting in defense for the victim, according to WIS, which is good. You know what? Good on the boyfriend. Because fuck that guy. Fuck the fuck the guy trying to rape his girlfriend. Just 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 fuck him. No, don't fuck him. Cause, don't don't fuck him. He might like that. Yeah, he he just might. But you know, just seriously, I I, I applaud that the the boyfriend. It's just good on you. <laughs> yeah, nobody nobody is bleeding. Nobody has a bleeding heart for this attempted rapist. Now, should we not go back to the question that we got from Tumblr? about uh innocent until proven guilty yeah this is true this is very true and and see the thing is i i think what what drives me a little bit more towards to believe he was trying to rape somebody is just is, he was caught in the act yeah yeah there's no real doubt the only doubt is whether or not it was rape or consensual but i yeah. think when your girlfriend is like help help and, uh, yeah, it's probably rape, and, uh, honestly, I don't imagine anybody would do anything other than beat the ever-living shit out of this guy. Yeah, so, so even with that said, it, you know, it's pretty much caught in the act. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, I, I would not be bleeding, my, my, my ass would not be bleeding for this guy, or anywhere else. Oh. Our next story comes out of Australia, the land down under. And I am probably going to get hate mail for my Australian accent. Well, yeah, you should. Uh -huh. uh, out of Darwin, Australia, by the way. Darwin. Darwin, Australia. Dramatic video released by police in Darwin, Australia shows a masked man as he tried to blow up an ATM machine. Well, that's nice. Uh -huh. But things didn't go as planned, and the man's explosive device went off right in his face, sending him stumbling backwards. <laughs> it's like a cartoon. He's got an Acme Dynamite kit. He does, and and there's a picture. There's a picture of this ATM. He did damage it. He got. He did some damage to it, but it, it didn't. You know, he he blew himself up too. <laughs> the man was last seen run away, running away from the scene, and the picture that's up here on the video version is the 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 destroyed ATM. <laughs> it's just <laughs> okay. I'm just imagining, you know, just just light the bomb, you know, put it up there, being all meticulous, face right up against it, just to make sure it's all kind of you know, right there. And then all of a sudden, he light he, he sets the views too low, and just boom. <laughs> it's like it's like one of those cat videos where a cat is like like getting up real close and then all of a sudden it just like jumps or whatever and cat just jumps back and just runs the fuck away. Cats and toasters is basically what happened here. Yes, cats and toasters. <laughs> although although I have to wonder. Speaking of speaking of which, have you ever done that with a toaster? Uh no. No. Uh, oh. I have fundamental knowledge of how a toaster works. This is true. This is true. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it with a bomb, but... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh. Uh, take another shot, ladies and gentlemen. We are going back to Florida. If we must. We must. When officials came to arrest 28-year-old Floridian Casey Moulter for the thorough dismantling he'd just given his girlfriend's 90... 1997 Ultima, he told them he'd done it because she was a spiritual person who could tell a person about their dreams. Her latest vision, he added, was a little heavy on the dead grandma dildo sex. Wow. That's oddly specific. <laughs> Very specific. Specifically, according to Treasure Coast newspapers crime blogger Will Greenlee, Moulter's unnamed girlfriend allegedly told him that his dead grandmother would appear in his dreams and commit unusual sex acts involving him and an adult toy. Okay! <laughs> For that unwanted prediction, he allegedly smashed her cell phone, slashed 
the Ultima's tires, broke its side mirror, literal it with ambiguously natured love notes, and adorned it with a single used condom like a maraschino cherry. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck, dude? All this is guys... obviously a very weird couple. This is. I mean, I mean, Becky and I are weird, but come on. Oh. But you're not like grandma dildo sex weird smashing up the car weird. Oh, because I know if I tried to pull that shit with her, considering her living situation with her grandmother, she'd kick my ass. <laughs> oh. Greenlee's report also includes the mention of Moulter throwing the creams and lotions, though it's unclear whether his target was his girlfriend or her Nissan. Lotion on his skin or else he gets the hose again. <laughs> uh, he didn't want the hose. According to the incident report, Moulter of Indian River County told police he snapped because he couldn't get the image of his late sweet granny violating him with an adult erotic device out of his head. <laughs> oh, God. Dude. Okay, I admit, that would be a hard thing to get out of your head. It could be. I, I'm not going to deny that. But go play some Pokemon. Watch a movie. You go know? do literally anything else. Yeah. Just don't watch granny porn for a while, okay? Lay off the granny porn. Because that might trigger it. But seriously, dude. Really? Really? Ugh. <laughs> the destruction of property is not necessarily warranted in the case of I had a vision of your granny. <laughs> like, seriously. Wow. How, do you, how do you even believe that to begin with and then act out on it? Uh, just, dude, he, it, I'm surprised. It doesn't say he, whether or not he was on something. But I wouldn't be surprised if he was. You have to be on something to think that, I would think. It, it ha you'd have to be on something because you're in Florida. Yeah, <laughs> true. Because in Florida, they, 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 they you know, they, they have little things that come by every now and then, and they pump meth into the air. So everybody's on a little bit of meth. <laughs> no. Uh, everybody else from Florida's like, fuck you! And it's like, yeah, take your meth. <laughs> no, no, I, th I think if you're from Florida, you understand that Florida is full of crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about it. Yeah. But speaking of crazy, this is a little bit more tragic crazy. In Hayden, Idaho, employees evacuated the Hayden Walmart on Tuesday following a shooting inside the store. Authorities on the scene around 11.15 a.m. described the shooting as accidental. A woman was shopping with four kids when one of the kids reached into her purse and accidentally discharged the weapon, according to Kunte... Kunte? Kunte Kinte? I don't know. Uh, county sheriff's deputies at the scene. The gunshot killed the 29-year-old woman. Deputies on the scene said the child who accidentally fired the handgun was about two years old. Deputies and the woman and the children were in the back of the store near the electronics area when it happened. Deputies said the woman was in town for holidays and is not from the area. Video surveillance in the store, along with eyewitness testimony, helped deputies determine that this was an accident. Authorities said the woman did have a concealed weapons permit, and the store is currently closed. So, so okay, number one, I, I am sorry that this woman died. I, I feel for her kids. I really do. Hopefully that, you know, she wasn't a single mother. Otherwise, you know, kids could end up in the system. Or hopefully she has relatives so that the kids, you know, will be in a loving home or what have you. Hopefully the kids will be taken care of. With all of that said, woman, why the fuck are you keeping a gun in your purse with the safety off? No, seriously. Either, this is, this is my theory, either that woman is so dumb because she keeps a loaded weapon with the safety off in her purse, or that child is a master genius and was fully prepared to assassinate that woman. <laughs> These are the only two theories that make sense to me. I would love for the other theory... To be the one that actually is true, but I, 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 I know I can't just let it be true because, you know, people are that stupid. Uh, uh, I wish the two-year-old was a genius. I really do, but it's not. He's probably not. He's probably just doesn't understand what was going on. Oh, what's this? <laughs> Why is mommy on the ground with red stuff coming out of her mouth? Oh, honey, you know, traumatizing. Shit. You know, like I said, I feel for the kids, but I'm sorry. You, 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 you know, I don't care if you have a concealed weapons permit. There, there is a reason why, you know, gun control should also, or maybe 
you know, you know, or maybe even even instead of gun control, have gun safety education. You know, if you're going to carry a gun, carry it in a holster, carry it somewhere to where your two-year-old can't accidentally fire it off and kill somebody. I also heard that maybe like people were some some media was reporting that the the gun was in a locked case or something, and I'm like, no. No, that that cannot be true because a two-year-old wouldn't be able to get into a locked case no. unless it wasn't locked. Exactly, because two-year-olds, yeah, they, they, they are persistent little fucks at times, but a locked case in a purse, especially in the middle of a Walmart, no. Especially when you got, well, let's see, three other kids around with you at the time, no. They're going to see what's going on. You know, you're going to be taking too long and, you're, and everybody else is going to see what's going on and get you out of there. Now, what this probably took place probably in the span, I'm going to guess about 30 seconds. You know, the kid, you know, started rummaging around the purse because he's curious. Saw that th maybe he didn't even see the gun. He's just rummaging around and then all of a sudden, boom, scared the hell out of the kid and there's a mother on the floor. You know, it's probably what happened. So the, let, let this be a tragic lesson in gun safety. Keep your shit locked. Get a holster. You know, if if your ha gun has a safety on it, keep that on until you're ready to use it. That that it's really as simple as that. You know, otherwise you're going to end up like this woman, who 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 is now dead, because you know, curious two year old didn't know better. And think about how fucked up that kid is going to be. Yeah. Like seriously fucked up. Their whole family is going to be fucked up now. Because they're just going to continuously, subconsciously blame that child for the mother's death, even though the kid didn't know what he was doing. Ah. Which is why you don't have, like, weapons around children, because they don't know what it is. They don't understand. Adults, you are the ones who understand the gravity of an armed gun you have to take responsibility for it no one is gonna fucking do it for you and kids don't know any better it's toys to them everything is toys to them yes and and, and just uh and sometimes kids can be really cruel i can see some of these other kids when they get old enough you know the two the, the two-year-old when he gets older he's gonna be like well yeah you did this this, this. and then one of them is gonna look back being really cruel and say yeah but you killed your mother yeah but you killed mom yeah so fuck you yeah because like i said Kids can be cruel. Kids are kids can be little assholes. Yeah. And that that kid is gonna grow up knowing at some point in time somebody in his family is gonna tell him that he doesn't have a mommy because he killed her. And and I hope it's the family that tells him this and not because he listened to this show. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> uh, but you know what? If in the future this kid listens to the show, I'm just gonna say it right now. You know what? You didn't know what you were doing. I don't hold you responsible. It, it's not your fault. No. No, your, it's it's not your fault. Your mama was 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 you know irresponsible. irresponsible. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. <clears throat> uh, speaking of using things irresponsibly, Palm Beach County, Florida. Everybody's gonna be drunk by the end of this show, I think. There's a lot of Florida for one show. Yes. Wow. Sony says its PlayStation Network has been fully restored after a Christmas time attack knocked it offline for about three days. During that time, a caller to Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office 911 system asked the dispatcher for assistance on the issue. Saturday, the caller phoned 911 and referenced the PlayStation Network. In the 911 call obtained by WPTV, the caller asks, I was wondering, do you guys know anything about that? The BBSO dispatcher temporarily asks the caller to wait while she asks others about the problem. Then she returns and tells the caller, yeah, I guess some people have been reporting it. The dispatcher then suggests the caller phone Sony directly using a number that is likely on the machine itself. PBSO later tweeted, Last time I checked, that wasn't an emergency. Try going outside or read a book. The FBI is investigating the Sony cyber attack that disrupted gun activity and online gameplay. Okay, I have been in positions where I've been trying to do online games and haven't for whatever reason. I mean, hell, just the, I, just like the little iPad games. I, I've had that issue. And it gets annoying. It, it really does. But I don't call the police over it. This is not a police issue. This is, this is you know, you if anything, you call Sony. Like, like the dispatcher told them, 911 is not troubleshooting. At least not for your electronics. It's troubleshooting for a dude trying to beat the shit out of you. 
that's why that's when you call nine one one. Troubleshooting some yeah. sort of assault charge. <laughs> there you go. Um, uh. it, I'd hate to I'd hate to blame certain people for this, but I really feel like this is this is what we get when we watch too much television and too many movies because nobody ever calls the police without calling nine one one. So when you all every time you watch the police getting called in a movie or a TV show, it's always getting nine one one called. And uh, I don't even know where to begin to call like just the police station to ask a question or or something like that. You'd have to like go online and look up your local police station, figure out which one's your local police station, um, figure out if they're the right one to call. You probably have to dial a couple of extensions, and that's work. Um, yeah. And 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 I think most people just don't know that that's how you contact the police when it's not an emergency. Yeah. Here, here's another here's another life lesson takeaway from this show, ladies and gentlemen. Look up the numbers to your local precinct, and, and that way, if you have something like say, you know, you're you're worried about your 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 internet, your your Sony connection, your PlayStation network connection, or whatever, and you really must call the police. You shouldn't, but if you must, get the local number. You'll get somebody local who, if at least in the case of this town, they'll probably look at you crazy even though you can't see it and probably tell you, you know what, call this, you know, just call the damn company, you dumb moron. <laughs> R rather than tying up a phone line for someone who really is having an emergency. Yeah. I, ju I just don't think that calling the police in a non-emergency situation is, is common knowledge. It's, I don't think it's something that people commonly do anymore. Um. No, but, but it should be. It should be more common knowledge. And, and I don't know, you know, like you said, fucking movies is like, hi. Ugh, God damn it. It's, it's, it's one of those things you don't learn in school. Yeah. Uh, like uh, how to do your taxes and write a check. Yeah. Which, okay, I guess not anymore because I think I learned how to write a check in school, <laughs> surprisingly. I learned but... how to write a check in Girl Scouts. <laughs> Well, I was never in Girl Scouts, well, for obvious reasons, but... Hey, I was in Boy Scouts. There you go. <laughs> but I didn't learn how to write, do anything in Boy Scouts. Well, yeah. I didn't learn how to do nothing, I just did. No practical, uh, everyday, worldly applications. Yeah, because Boy Scouts are all teaching you about nature and, and, and everything else, and the Girl Scouts are more practical. When <laughs> well, everybody... I wouldn't go that far. Well, okay, they, they all learn more about nature, but apparent, but at least in terms of check writing, from what I from what I'm gleaming from this, yeah, it's a little bit more practical. Yeah. Also, cookies. Also, cookies. Yes. You get really tired of cookies when you have to sell them. It's, this is true. Oh, oh, oh! You can buy them online, can't you? Can you? Holy shit! This I is think so. I think so. I I I think so. I think they're like trying it or 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 what have you, but but if 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 I can, when I can, oh my god, I'm going to get myself some cookies! <laughs> I'm going to get so fat! Yes! Ah, uh, well, I don't need to get any fatter than what I am, but... <laughs> oh, lordy, 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 lordy. <laughs> uh, and our last news story for this week... Wow, we're just kind of blowing through these. We did. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. But uh, last one for this week. An Illinois man who wrecked his new Ford Thunderbird in 1963 unwittingly carried around a memento of the crash for decades. A seven-inch turn signal embedded in his arm and not removed until this week. Arthur Lampitt, 75, was pretty sure what the foreign object was even before a surgeon cut out of, out of him on Wednesday. When his arm started to swell recently, he unearthed photos of the total car and noticed the blinker lever was missing. Still, his wife Betty was stunned when doctors removed the piece of metal and confirmed her husband's suspicion. Oh my god, the Granite City, Illinois woman told the St. Louis Dispatch. The surgeon, Do Dr. Timothy Lang, told the newspaper it was a shock to him as well. We see all kinds of foreign objects like nails or pellets, but not usually this large. Not usually, usually not a turn signal from a 1963 T-Bird, Lang said. Something this large often gets infected. Lampett, a father of four, busted his hip in the accident half a century ago, so a more minor injury to his arm went largely unnoticed. It wasn't until about a decade ago when he set off a courthouse metal detector that x-rays showed there was something, thought to be about the size of a pencil, in his arm. The newspaper re 
with, with was the newspaper reported. Uh, since, but since it wasn't causing any pain, he didn't do anything about it. So yeah, it's harmless, whatever. A couple of weeks ago, that changed when he felt a sharp point. Everything was fine until it started to get bigger, his wife told the Post-Dispatch. The arm started bulging, and he was turning into Popeye. The procedure to remove it only took 45 minutes, and he got to take the lever when he left, but hasn't figured out what to do with it. We'll figure something out, I'm sure, he said. How many years was that? What, what 50 years? Oh Almost my god. Over 50 years. Jeebus. And, Seriously. And just recently started to hurt. That, that seems like a medical miracle mystery to me. Like, how do you have a foreign object, a non-organic object in your body, inside of your flesh, and it not have some sort of reaction? I know, like, right? Like, uh, what, what, what caused it to start swelling up just now? Was it, like, can you imagine it rusting or something? Like, uh, ah! Oh, God. Uh, Is, uh, rusty fucking shit in your body. Oh, that, 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 oh God, that might be what caused it. That's, finally that's started what started rusting. That's what I'm thinking of. It's like, eventually some, the, something in your body would have to react negatively to it. Yeah. I mean, but but his body healed around it, obviously. Uh, and, and how did they? I I know that he had a hip problem, but how did they not scan your your injured arm too? I mean, even in the '60s, they would have figured out some. They would have noticed something. You know, I mean, you you would think. Uh, think. Oh lordy. Well, well, I'm glad it's over with now. Yeah, uh, oh, I don't know what he's gonna do with it, but hey, you know. Uh, things, things and stuff. So, that that is our uh, last news story for this particular week. We got like 18 or so minutes left. So, what I am going to do, I am actually going to go into a big cache of things that I have got set aside for moments like this. A lot of them I do put aside for constructive deconstruction as well. But since there are so many, <laughs> uh, I can always... You know, do a, do a little bit here, a little bit there. Um, let's see. There is there was something, there was something here that I wanted to bring up. Um, what was it? Where was it? Where was it? Yes, this is this is live, everybody. <laughs> um, We're professionals, damn it. Yes, we are very professional, very 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 much professionals here. Um, ah, oh, there it goes. Okay, since well, since Christmas was just yeah, Christmas had just uh, ended and everything. I'll, I'll take like one thing, and we'll we'll bring this up. What I've got here is the AFA for American Family Association naughty or nice list for this particular year. Uh, because we all know the American Family Association. Uh, isn't that one of those, was it, was it American Family Association or one of those other groups that's, um, uh, uh, um, in league with like Brian Fisher and his ilk? I'm um, wanting to say so, but. One of them got labeled a hate group, I thought. Yeah. I, I don't wasn't remember. sure if it was the AFA or not. Yeah. But, um, but it's in there because obviously there's going to be some stuff in here. Okay. So they are, they're rating the top retailers and how they market to Christmas shoppers. Okay, so let's see. A five-star rated company promotes and celebrates Christmas on an exceptional basis. Um, that's their blue ones for us. Uh, their green ones also use uh, the nice list, actually. company uses the term Christmas on a regular basis. We consider that company Christmas friendly. Uh, the yellow is marginal. Uh, company refers to Christmas infrequently or in a single advertising medium, but not in others. And... Red, the naughty company, may use Christmas sparingly in a single or unique product description, but as a company, does not recognize it. So it's basically companies that say Merry Christmas. And it, the more you say it, the more you get on their nice list. And if they mostly say Happy Holidays, except for situational things, then you are on their naughty list. And if you're in the between, well, that's what the yellow is for. So, okay. So I want to look at who is on the naughty list. Let's see. Uh, Barnes and Noble, Family Dollar, Foot Locker, The Limited, Morris's, Maurice's, Office Depot, Office Max, PetSmart, Staples, Steinmart, Super Value, and Victoria's Secret. Why am I not surprised Victoria's Secret is on the naughty list? 
<laughs> I mean, I mean, just of course you. It, it's a lingerie store. You've got women parading around in their underwear and their advertisement. Of course, they're going to be on their naughty list. <laughs> and and bear in mind, these are companies that typically would say Happy Holidays. Or maybe not just Christmas. I'm I'm willing to bet. They, they they recognize that Christmas is not the one true holiday holiday or what have you or whatever. Yeah, every time somebody I know says it's Mer Merry Christmas, not Happy Holidays, I want to punch a Christian. Yeah. Uh, it is just oh lordy 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 lordy. All right, so the marginal ones. This is these are they 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 have like one advertising medium where they mention christmas frequently or they do it a little bit more often but not not but not enough to be on the full on nice list uh, the marginal ones uh 1-800-flowers.com academy sports and outdoors bath and body works best buy cooking.com cvs freds radio shack safeway starbucks true value that's that company is still around true value is still around holy shit uh, uncommongoods.com walgreens and whole foods so they just say it every now and then. Every now and then, it's like Merry Christmas, you know. They don't make a big campaign out of it. Maybe they, I, I imagine maybe they have a sign that says "Hey, Merry Christmas" or "Happy Holidays" or what have you. Or maybe they change it up with "Holiday" or what have you, and that just happens to be enough for them. Uh, so that's the marginal ones. The nice ones. The nice ones is a big one. Is a big one. Nice ones include. AFA Online Store, Belk, Hobby Lobby, of course, Lowe's, Walmart. <laughs> Walmart starts saying Merry Christmas before Halloween even hits. <clears throat> they're, they're not doing it because they believe in God. I mean, clearly they don't believe in anything holy. No, they do it because people are going to pay money for that shit. Um, Ace Hardware, Amazon.com. Okay. Banana Republic, Bed Bath and Beyond. Okay, I, I almost got confused for a moment there. Like, wait, bad, it, the, it's the Bath Body Works, Bed Bath and Beyond. For some reason, I was merging the two. Bass Pro Shops, Big Lots, Books a Million. They still exist, right? <laughs> Cabela's, Dick's Sporting Goods, Dillard's, Do It Best Hardware, Dollar General, Gap Incorporated, HEB Stores, HSN.com, Hallmark, Hancock Fabrics, Harris Teeter Stores, Home Depot. Hi V stores, JC Penny, Joanne Fabrics, Kmart. Uh, surprisingly, they're still around. They're hanging in there. They are hanging in there. <laughs> Coles, Kroger, LL Bean, Macy's, Marshalls, Meyer, Menards, Michael Stores, Ny Nyman Marcus, Nordstrom, Old Navy, Pier One Imports, ProFlowers.com, Publix, QVC.com, Rite Aid, Sam's Club. Excuse me. Skills Shields Sporting Goods, rather Sears, Super D Drug, Target, TJ Maxx, Toys R Us, and Zappos.com. And the top ones, the ones that were the uh, first five I listed, the AFA, Bell, Cobby Lobby, Lowe's, Walmart, those are the five-star rated companies, according to the AFA, that basically shove Christmas in your face whether you want it or not. And hence, you know, even before Halloween, Walmart's got the Christmas stuff up. It was like, it was like, like between Halloween and Christmas, I went into the local Walmart here, and I saw like... You know how you have, like, the uh, cards towards the front of the store, right? Mm hmm They had, like, two or three different segments for Christmas cards facing out. And then, like, this little, like, sliver of a segment for Thanksgiving cards. Do people give cards at Thanksgiving? I don't even know. But That's apparently so they can if they want to. And so it's like, oh, we got Christmas here, Christmas there. Oh, okay, Thanksgiving. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. It's like, okay, I enjoy Christmas, the Christmas holiday you know, a, a little bit. All right, you know, it's okay. You know, I don't enjoy it as much as I did as a kid, but we don't need it shoved in 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 any. You know, I don't need it shoved down my throat all the time, especially not when other holidays are supposed to be taking precedence. Uh, now here's the thing. Uh, uh, another thing is, um, oh, the the AFA had called for a Christmas boycott on PetSmart, which is one of the naughty ones. And click on any naughty company name for details and contact information. Uh, I guess so people can boycott them for not saying Merry Christmas. Uh, Dear Christians of America, you are not being persecuted for being Christian. 
um, there is no war on Christmas. You, I don't even know what to call these people. They're just so self-involved. These aren't the people who, who think that we are a Christian nation. We're not a Christian nation. We are a nation of many people from all over the world who all have different religions. And that was the fucking point of the country to fucking begin with. Exactly. Uh, to try and put one religion over the country annihilates the entire purpose on which the country was founded. Yeah, but they don't care. They, they, they want to run things their way. And of course, Christianity apparently has been the best way to control a bunch of people. Yeah. Uh, which which actually reminds me, Becky and I have been watching like those old satanic panic videos from the nineties. Holy shit, is there a lot is there a lot of projection going on there? Oh yeah. holy <laughs> shit. Like like there was one that was like it was sent to like you know, officers all over the country to kind of train them in what to look for in like occult scenes or whatever, or that things signs that somebody might be into Satanism or whatever. And a lot of these signs, especially when applied to teenagers, they're also signs of rebellious teens. No Satanism involved. This just teens being the shit. It, it's sort do. of like if you look at the signs of being a cult and look at the signs of Christianity. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm sorry, but there's not much of a difference. Not really, you know, no. And and even Becky, who is a Christian, she does not deny this at all. Because you're a free thinking human being. Good job, Becky. Yes. This this is why I this is why I love her. <laughs> Among other reasons. Uh, but they do the AFA does list their criteria. They reviewed up to four areas to determine if a company was Christmas friendly in their advertising, print media, broadcast media, website and or personal visits to the store. If a company's ad has references to items associated with Christmas trees, wreaths, lights, etc., it was considered as an attempt to reach Christmas shoppers. If a company has items with Christmas but did not use the word Christmas, then the company is considered as censoring Christmas. Censoring Christmas. Censoring Christmas and recognizing that there's more than one holiday this time of year are not the fucking same thing. Yeah. Dumb fucks. And you know what? Any one of these companies, any one of these companies, if they don't want to use the word Christmas, they don't fucking have to. That is because not your not... censorship. That see, 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 when 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 the freedom where freedom of speech falls, it falls if the government tells them they cannot use it as a private business. That's where the First Amendment violation would come into play. But there is no First Amendment violation. These are privately owned companies. They can say whatever the fuck they want. They may not be free from the consequences of what they say, but they can still say whatever the fuck they want. If they don't want to put out Christmas or, or, or celebrate your holiday, they don't fucking have to. A lot of them do that because, hey, you know what? A lot of their customers do. Their customers are going to come in and spend money for the holidays anyway. May as well, you know, you know, exploit it. That, that's, that's what they're doing. Some of them a lot more than others. And some of them are exploiting more than one holiday. So to me, with that in mind, it's looking like the AFA is saying, well, they're not exploiting Christmas enough, so they're naughty. Like, the fuck? Do you even understand the reason for the season? I know. As as your religion dictates it, yeah, you know it, it, it involved you know the son of God being born to a virgin and and in a manger and, and growing up and then and then we're gonna have that other holiday in April or I think it's April or May or whenever it's supposed to be this year, you know where we celebrate that he got killed and was dead for three days and came back from the grave, you know zombies, yeah zombies, yeah we hey we have a religion we we have a holiday for a zombie. Actually, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, actually, I th I think I've seen like Jesus is technically a lit, a like or lich or whatever, however you pronounce it. So, but either way, he's still undead, so he counts. What is dead thing. may never die. <laughs> oh, so let's see. Okay, they have um, they want to report a company, send it to that address, yada 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 yada. Um, uh, and they do note that they do not list local or regional companies only nationally recognized companies will be listed and the list only reflects a company's Christmas advertising does not take into account other corporate policies AFA may not agree with well with Hobby Lobby I'm pretty sure you're very good with sucking their dick anyway right <laughs> you know and you know what 
there's act oh no target is on there okay i i because i'd read through the list and and i was like wait what about target okay there it is it's under the nice uh you read through enough of a list everything gels together a little bit <laughs> oh lordy 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 so yeah that was the that was the like post christmas thing i i probably had it set up for a for like a christmas time version of constructive deconstruction or something but uh since uh, holly's computer which which by the next time she comes on it should be fixed and we should have her voice again and it will be awesome we will have trumpets and and confetti and everything we choir <laughs> yes ah. yes you know you know and and hey you want to be a part of that choir go to the thespian talk tumblr drop and ask there you go uh which if you want to send in questions you go to the thespian talk tumblr i believe it is thespiantalk.tumblr.com uh if you're watching this on the video or even if you're looking at it on iTunes or whatever uh, should be at the bottom maybe not on the iTunes version because uh, I know you like you can put the descriptions or what have you you can see them but uh, definitely on the video version go check out that link uh, right now all it has is just the episodes as they update but uh, you know feel free to send in asks submit some stuff if you want to you know we're open to that um, just a place for fans you can go and you can do the things um, about four minutes left. I do want to take this time and thank all of our wonderful patrons. The ones you see, if you're watching the video, they're going across the bottom of the screen right now. Um, and hopefully within the next month, uh, I know a couple of my patrons ha are at the proper level to have on podcasts once a month. Uh, if they want to come on or what have you, uh, I'll probably be poking them if they're not listening and consider this a poke or whatever. I ramble. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. But, you know, hey, all that information is down there on the video version, which I am very glad to say, if, if for those who actually do want to know how I'm recording it this time, uh, I'm very glad I have XSplit because uh, with the Skype update, CallGraph just does not want to play, which is really m big pain in the ass. But, hey, we have backup. <laughs> and it allows me to do the fun things with the videos and, and the, and the uh, pictures that I did earlier. So uh, XSplit, it's it's really decent program if you just want to record things like this as well. It's not a bad streaming uh, software either, at least not at least in my experience. Oh, so with all of that being said, uh, Kat, do you have any final thoughts for this episode? God, you do ramble so much. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I am a motor mouth. I I need to I need to try and keep a lid on it a little bit more. Uh, but. You know, what, what can we do, right? Oh, oh, well, I know what we can do. We can make sure we have three people on. <laughs> that, that, will, that will help a little bit. Oh, but uh, yeah, so if we wanted to find you on the internet, Cat, where could we find you? You can find me on facebook.com slash nerdiscat and Twitter at labyrinthcat. And then you can also find me on my other shows, um, Nerd to the Third Power over at channelawesome.com and uh, what the fuck over at 1201beyond.com. Speaking of which, that particular uh, iTunes archive hasn't updated in a while. Uh, I have no control over such things. Yeah, I figured not, but it's like, oh shit. <laughs> uh, I think somebody fell asleep over there, but that's okay. You know, it, it happens. You know, I, I think I think the person we've got responsible for updating them on, on our site it has kind of fallen asleep too, so. Uh, but, you know, it happens. I don't know, I just show up and talk into a microphone. <laughs> That is my relationship with all of my podcasts. Is I just show up and talk into a microphone. Yes, and and you even do it for you even do bumpers. Yes, I do. It's very 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 good bumpers. Oh, so if you wanted to find me on the interwebs, on the social medias, and everything, I am on Twitter and Tumblr at Gomer Two One Double X. And if you want to go to my sites spaces on the on the web, uh, RT Gomer Productions. That's rtgomer.com. It's got a Facebook page. It's got its own Tumblr. Uh, I think it has its own Twitter account as well if you want to keep up on updates for not just my shows, but shows from everybody else that's on the site. Um, you check out those spaces. Uh, this show, of course, like I've mentioned, it does have its own Tumblr account, uh, thespiantalk.tumblr.com, or whatever it is down at the bottom there. The, the one in the description is right if you're watching the video version. Uh, you can also find my shows over on nerdvice.com, which just recently, I think it was just a couple of days before we recorded this, a new trailer dropped. I haven't dropped it on my site yet. I dropped it on my personal Tumblr and on Nerdvice, but it is a uh, trailer for an upcoming uh, Let's Play series that I'm doing, uh, the Bionic Commando Trilogy, which I worked really hard 
on on that trailer. I'm very proud of it. I hope if you guys go check it out, and um, that should be starting up in February. I look forward to doing it because <laughs> because those games are so much fun. <laughs> uh, so at any rate, that is going to be it for this week. And until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the cat signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who could be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows. 